So this video is based off of section B-3, which is providing examples and definitions for respondent and operant conditioning. As I've said before, every bit of information comes from the Cooper, Heron, and Heward book, the third edition. So make sure you have that nearby so that you can reference whenever you need to. So to start off, we have to consider the temporal loci of stimuli. Basically, this means when a stimulus was presented. And when we do that, we have to consider respondent behavior. And what happens with respondent behavior is that there is an antecedent. So this means that the stimuli was presented prior to the behavior happening. We consider respondent behavior being elicited. And so what this means is that a lot of times we're talking about our reflexes. So for example, let's say that you touch a hot stove. Your immediate reaction would be to remove your hand. This is a reflex because you're trying to reduce the aversiveness, the pain that is happening. So we all know what we're talking about when we have respondent conditioning. This means that a previously neutral stimuli is presented in quick, rapid fashion in order for conditioning or a form of learning to happen. So Russian physiologist Pavlov discovered this type of conditioning when he realized that when laboratory assistants were coming in to feed the dogs, the dogs would immediately salivate. So now we have to talk about operant behavior. So basically this means that a behavior is learned by its consequences. This means that the stimulus was presented after the behavior. So now the difference between operant behavior and respondent behavior is where we get down to those basics. So respondent behavior, we're talking about some form of reflex and it's trying to continue the survival of that particular organism. Now with operant behavior, we're looking at the consequence, meaning that the organism learns over time based on that stimuli that happened after their behavior occurred. So both are doing the same thing for the organism. The organism is learning. It's just one's happening before the behavior and one's happening after the behavior. So when we talk about operant conditioning, we're talking about the selective process and the effectiveness of a consequence on a behavior. So this means that something has to happen in close proximity of time after the behavior because that's gonna change the effectiveness of that particular stimuli after the behavior has already occurred, which means that that behavior is going to be least likely or less likely to occur. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how there's a difference between reinforcement and punishment. So these are things that happen after a particular behavior and makes it more likely for it to happen in the future. So I hope all of this information on respondent and operating conditioning has helped you get a basic understanding of B-3 in the task list. As always, if you have any comments or please like and share this video. I'm Brittany from Teach Me ABA and we'll see you next time.